I had a shave this morning. I said I missed a tiny bit there. You know that really awkward bit of your chin? So technically, I'm now growing a goatee. The world's smallest goatee. <laughs> <laughs> right, John, let's let's kick it in the dick. Let's get the rest of this podcast done. That is amazing. That's going to be the opening link straight away. I've got loads to talk about, actually, John. I've got loads to talk about. There is so much happening this week. It's unreal. This is Sheer Isolation. It's presented by Kieran Moore in Trowbridge and John Ponting in Cricklade. Hello, everybody. Welcome. This is Sheer Isolation. I am John Ponting in Cricklade. My colleague Kieran Moore is over in Trowbridge, showing off a Trowbridge Festival t-shirt. Hello, Kieran. Hello, John. How you doing? Yeah, doing all right. Thank you. Absolutely fine. Fantastic. John, there's loads happening this week. It's unreal. Um, What do you want to start on first, then? Uh, Johnny Foreigner announced a gig in London, so they're they're coming back. They're out of out of hibernation. Probably might have a new album, who knows? Johnny Foreigner are back. I'm delighted. Um, what else happened? Um, the pump, the village pump in Trowbridge. We have been invited to do the music at the Inox Beer Festival, and as a result, we've also been invited to do the music at the Box Seam Brewery in Holt, so just outside Trowbridge. They're going to do a series of gigs on the forecourt. They've done, they spend a lot of money doing a bar in, in their factory, and it looks lush. I went over there yesterday. It's a great space. Um, we're going to do some music there. It's going to be brilliant. It's almost as if life is starting to return back to normal. Uh, my inbox is inundated with people asking for PAs and tech support and, and gigs and music and bands. It has gone crazy. Um, and... Yeah, I'm going to overcommit myself. I've got a young lady called Robin, Robin Calvert, who lives in Westbury. She's a local musician. She's very good. I get on with her very well. She's now ha- helping me. She's now depping. And anything I can't do, she's covering for me. And so she's found her feet in the area very quickly. And she's loving it. She's loving everything that we're doing over here. It's It really is taking off. And I'm tickled pink, John. I'm tickled pink. You've got an assistant for the first time in 15 years. Incredible. Got an assistant, mate. Assistant. <laughs> and she's wonderful as well. She's just brilliant. So... So for people who are new to the show, uh, the purpose of the next half hour is for us to promote the local music and art scene across uh, the west of England. Uh, we will do that by playing a couple of tracks and also uh, by uh, interviewing a person. And this week we are being joined by Sam Robinson from the uh, CD and music shop in Marlborough, Sound Knowledge. Uh, Sam is a wonderful human being. Um, I don't actually know how old he is, but I did say he's, I think he's slightly younger than me. But I've known him quite a long time as, as Sam from Sound Knowledge. Um, he's always in there when I go in. I mean, put, he always puts posters up for me or puts flyers on the counter, that kind of thing. Um, he's just such a lovely kid. I could talk to him all day long. You would have done if I didn't cut you off as well. <laughs> the thing is, I feel I feel like we only just scraped the surface of all the things we could have gone in detail to. But maybe we're getting back for part two at some point. I don't know. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, we can do a follow up. Um, we'll also be talking about the uh, the ominous July 19th date, which is which is on its way. We'll, we'll do that later on in the show. So, um, have you picked a track? Because I've uh, picked one in my head. Oh, you've picked one? I, I've actually, I have picked a track. Okay, which is, which, is rele- which is relevant for, for this July 19th, because the, the, the final gig for the Victoria in Swindon before July 19th, so while restrictions still apply, they've got a, a gig on the 16th, um, which uh, includes Bristol rock band Parkas. I don't know if you're familiar oh, with them. Nice. I know Parkas, yeah. And they got a couple of supports as, as well, so that's at the Vic on uh, on the 16th in Swindon. Yeah, they're they're kind of they're quite um quite mucky rock, isn't it? it? It's quite a dirty sound from them. Yeah, it's quite like a dirty indie, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but uh, I found I found an acoustic version of one of their tracks, which is called Friday Night, and uh, this is how it sounds. One, two, one, two, three.
just because it's fun, fun, fun Friday night. Parkers, um, what was the song called? Uh, Friday Night. Friday Night. I have done their sound before in Chippenham at the what they were called the, the Take the Stage Back of the Bands with um with uh the, the, the Riverside Riverbank and then Tom over over in Chippenham and they're a really good band. So I'm delighted they're still kicking around and doing good stuff. And it's a cracking video. They're basically for for, for the guys who, who haven't got the video feed. They're they're playing instruments uh, while sat on sat in the bath, sat on the toilet. I don't know if it was a lockdown film video. I don't know. I didn't check when it was uh, when it was recorded. But anyway, there we go. But that's a good good track, John. I think it's a good good choice. Uh, we've got some more news for you, John. Okay. Gaz Brookfield, uh, he's hitting the road again in January 2020. He's coming to Trowbridge. He's coming to Swindon. So if you're in either of those areas, you can come watch your hometown boy come out. He's touring with Jake Martin and Ben Sides, also known as B Sides. All three of them can headline the show in their own right. They have all done in devices for me. And for me, this is just an absolutely wonderful tour full of friends. Um, I'm really excited about it. Um, I don't know how many tickets we sold, but we've definitely sold some already. So I'm delighted. It's really wonderful. If, if you haven't been to see Gaz Brickfield, I highly recommend it. He's, a, he's one man and his guitar kind of uh, uh, acoustic musician, but it, it's, he cut him open and he will bleed West Country to you. All, all of his tracks are based around the West Country and, and it's just really easy to listen to. It's great fun festival music, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Right, time for product placement. I got an email from um, B, um, uh, blah, 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 Raw Mail saying you've got a parcel for you. So I went and collected my parcel <coughs> and it is product placement. It is the brand new DZ Death Rays record. <coughs> now, it's their, I don't know, fifth, six, seven million record. I don't know. It's great. But I bought the premium version. I had to get it out of the sleeve already because it's a picture disc. That's a very fancy disc, isn't it? Look at that. It's like a moon, a crescent moon that then turns into a full moon that turns back into a total eclipse. Beautiful. Also, John, records, right? Surface noise on picture discs is normally horrific. This is no exception. It sounds terrible. It doesn't. It sounds great. But when you've got the needle just on the groove, it's like when any music kicks in. Um, so, yes, the picture discs, the technology has advanced so much so for, for coloured vinyl. Well, that sounds great nowadays, but picture discs still sound terrible. Um, that's not that record sounds great. Buy the record. It's brilliant. If you like riffy Australian rock. OK, then it's uh, time for this week's guest. So as we mentioned uh, previously uh, in the opening link, we are joined by Sam Robinson, who is uh, one of the members of staff at Sound Knowledge, which is a CD and music retail shop Final. in Marlborough. We're Marlborough's independent record shop. Um, it's, we've, it's, we're in our 26th year now, I think. I've been there for coming up to 10 of those, so not even half, oh. but, um, but I've put a fair shift in anyway. Um, <laughs> and, you know, we're, we're, we're just a kind of proper indie record shop. Uh, it's all new, two floors, CD, vinyl, a little bit of DVD, bit of T-shirts, merchandise, that kind of thing. Um, we'll order anything as long as it's you know, available. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> that's, that's kind of what we do. Uh, Roger used to have other shops, didn't he? He used to run PR sounds and devices. Yeah, that that predated um, sound knowledge. So that was the yeah, that was what he did before he before he moved to Marlborough and opened up. When I was a teenager in the sort of mid to late nineties, I basically went into PR sounds and spent my dinner money on records. I never ate dinner at school. I just bought seven inch singles. So I've got a big stack of nineties indie rock on seven inch, which is fantastic. And then one day the shop shut, and I was devastated. And I was <laughs> 
Yes, Sam Knowledge opens, but way too far for me to go. I couldn't go to, to Marlborough. We're lucky we get people travelling from, you know, hey, as far a field as Berkshire, you know, uh, which I do as well, actually. I commute in in the morning. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, we, uh, no, we, we, we have a lot of support, but also we, we get quite a lot of support from the record companies, particularly with regard to putting on events and things. We do quite a lot of PAs in stores, out stores with artists, um, oh, which, is, which has been a big help. Our first one is actually... The, and it's a purely acoustic in-store in the shop itself. Um, and it's the day after this, the lifting of the restrictions. So it's the 20th of, uh, yeah, 20th of this month. Um, and it's uh, um, Billy Martin, singer-songwriter, who is fabulous. She's, it's the Lovely. third time she's been. She's got a new album out, which is great. Um, always, a, always a pleasure to host her. She's, she's a terrific talent. Um, and that will be our first one for you know well since since uh, since lockdown we've had a lot of stuff that's kind of delayed from last year that still hope hopefully will take place uh, this year um and uh, yeah it's been, it's been a little while so we're gonna have to get back into the groove of it so were you were you at sound knowledge when the first pa install happens were you were no so no they, they they started before i got there in fact okay. i actually i i i just i started just after the ed sheeran one which is <gasps> probably that's gone down in you know local kind of folklore folklore uh, history yeah it has. yeah 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 so so that i started just after that so i think that was maybe september october time and i kind of started at the end of that that october um and uh, and so i just missed it and and obviously the point of these pas these these uh, installs are to sell physical product, aren't they? Because ultimately that is the reason you exist. It's, it's to sell physical product. Um, and I guess from the audience perspective, a lot of the time they get to do a, a Q&A, they get to do like a signing session at the end. So it really helps link an artist to their fans and a fan to the record. Um, how, how has that affected sales with, with Sound Knowledge? Presumably they've gone through the roof. You know, you sell more copies of long view or whatever than you previously would have done oh yeah i mean i would say probably every every year our best-selling album will be an album that, that from an artist that we've had do you know a pa or, or or an out store um so you know i think you know this this year i mean the, the year's not over but i would imagine that rag and bone man is going to be our number one selling album um and obviously we've sold sort of stacks of that on cd um which which is obviously a massive boost to the to the shop I'm, you know, I'm, I sometimes text you and say, I need this record. Can you get it for me? And obviously you go out of your way to, to get them for me. And you've been brilliant for me over the years. Um, but um, uh, do you see a difference with the clientele, the sorts of music that they buy? So, for example, I'm not very good with my pop stars, but do pop stars sell as many CDs as compared to, say, a band like the Wild Hearts, the Levelers or Frank Turner, who've got very entrenched fan bases, you will only buy physical I, I think there definitely is a difference. Well, firstly, I'll, I'll move heaven and earth to get you whatever you want, Kieran. That's the, that's the <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think that's that's a quite an astute point. I, I think there definitely is a trend with, I guess, when you're looking kind of artists from this year, people like uh, Olivia Rodrigo or like yeah. Billie Eilish, people like that. It's more of a streaming crowd, or at least their their real chart success will be built on on the back of streams for the most part. Um, and I think. Even even in the last couple of years, there's been a shift. You know, they're the kind of albums that would sell through sort of supermarkets, things like that, and that's yeah. where the volume of physical would come for those kind of artists. But exactly the kind of acts like you're saying, people like Frank Turner, who've got real kind of rabid fan bases who will support and and will buy you know different colored vinyl versions of the same album or like you know deluxe CDs, all that kind of stuff, yeah. Yeah. Um, to just to support him and to and to, you know get get a sort of chart placing for him. Um, those, those are yeah, those are the bands where you know physical products you you. Can't Kind of do see more of um and, I, and again i think it's it, it makes a difference with, with in terms of sort of in stores so there'd be acts maybe that um typically we wouldn't sell that much kind of physical you know they, they might have kind of predominantly sort of streaming fan bases but once you get that kind of connection to record shops and to the physical product obviously it kind of puts it in people's minds they make the link there really that you know the best way to support this person that they like is to you know purchase an album Presumably people, you know, because you've been doing them so long, once people buy, have that experience of buying a record, seeing an act that they like, they then become returning customers. They'll come and buy another record, irrespective of it being a, a, a live PA or whatever. And they kind of, you build that relationship with your clientele. Absolutely. I mean, that's, yeah, that's what it's all about, really. It's, yeah, it's just, it's bringing people to the shop. And if, you know, if it takes kind of 
coming to see someone that they are particularly passionate about to just get them through the door and to sort of see what we can do. Um, there's, yeah, I'd, I'd say there's, there's a lot of customers we've picked up uh, through, through exactly that. So they, they still have the magic of being able to walk into a shop, seeing the vast array of colours and you able to flip through the bins, which is just the best feeling. <laughs> oh, 100%. Nothing, yeah, you can't beat it and you can't replicate that online. No, no of course you can't. So Sam, who, who do you say was your, your favourite, if, if you can pick a favourite, actual in-store performance? That's a really good question, John. It's, it's, it's tricky. The one, I have to say quite often the ones I really like are the kind of the, 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 some of the lesser known artists or the ones who have albums that are kind of a little bit out there and a little bit strange and you think, oh, how are they going to replicate this live? So there, there's one kind of, um, it was one of the last ones actually that we did before before having to kind of put everything on hold for a while. Um, there's a guy called William Doyle, um, who formerly um, East India Youth, it was nominated for Mercury under that uh, alias, but has since put out stuff under his own name. Um, he, he came and just blew us all away. It was an amazing performance. Um, I think in terms of sort of the bigger ones, the one that really sticks in my mind is Everything Everything. Um, I was a big fan that. of theirs anyway. <laughs> yeah, they, but they were awesome. And they just, they, they just embraced it. They, they brought a whole van load of gear. They treated it as if it was like a stadium show. And they, you know, they just gave it absolutely everything. And, and it was, a, I mean, everyone who saw that will remember that. And they'll think that was one of the best, you know, the best things I've seen. I worked for a distributor briefly for three years over in Caution and Devices called Discovery, who used to supply mm. sound knowledge. So I kind of had an understanding of, of how things worked, generally speaking. And we see in the press a lot of the time, all the time, saying how significant vinyl sales are, how they're, you know, so massive and all the rest of it. But I also know from an insider's point of view that they are also hammed up to be more than what that actually, you know, they're, they're more significant than they actually are. Because, you know, it's very easy to increase your vinyl sales 100%, 200%, 300% when you only sold 30, we only sold 100. So without giving us figures and sort of all the rest of it, how significant is vinyl sales to sound knowledge and how how important are CDs still in 2021? Yeah, I, I think it, it is a kind of changing picture. And um, you're 100% right. The, the reason vinyl figures always look great is because it started from a very low place, sort of 10, 10 15 years ago. Um, and, you know, it's, it's obviously increased exponentially since then. But, you know, it's, it's going from, you know, a, a few thousands to, you know, hundreds of thousands to the millions again, which is kind of where it is now. Um, and, and I think even, even last year it increased, actually, I think, on, on the previous year. So it, it's definitely, you know, pretty robust. The vinyl revival is, is, is here to stay. Um, but I think, you know, the, the, the demise of, of CD is kind of, uh, I, it, it's a little bit over, over sort of stated, I think. They, they kind of come out with a kind of blanket figure that sort of says, oh, you know, more, they sold more on vinyl than on CD over, you know, the first quarter or whatever, X, X number of months or however it works um but the it, when you sort of dig into the figures they'll have arrived at that because they've done sort of value of sales rather than units and obviously right. you know as you will well know Kieran buying a record is a more expensive business than buying a cd um, it is. so you, you have to sell fewer lps to, to generate the kind of turnover that, that would kind of match um, CDs and CD is still I, I would still say it's the, it's the backbone for what we do certainly when it comes to kind of the the bundles for live events and things people will generally go for for the CD and you know not everyone who kind of is into going out and seeing live music is is a vinyl buyer we have to kind of remind ourselves obviously we're very much in the kind of vinyl bubble um, but not everyone is um, but 100 percent it's it's a it's a massive boost to the, or has been a massive boost to the shop over the last uh, you know seven or eight years when it's really started to kind of build on vinyl um it is just great to, to have it in store and, and to have that kind of first floor devoted to it and as you say flicking through the bins all that kind of yeah. stuff that's that's time honored tradition um and i suppose the other side of that is that the record store day is is massive for for independent shops just briefly tell us what what is your experiences with with the record store day and do you love it or hate it? Uh, how does it affect other people pressing records? Because I know it affects other artists wanting a record press because they can't because it's all clogged with Record Store Day stuff. <laughs> Just quickly give us your take of Record Store Day. Go. Yeah, well, I mean, it's uh, from, from a kind of independent business point of view, it, it's massive for us in terms of what it represents in, in terms of takings for us in the year. It's bigger than Christmas, I would say now. Um, wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. But I, you're, you're, you're right. 
I think every every kind of independent record shop will have a degree of ambivalence about it because exactly the kind of reasons you're saying the pressing plants are kind of just jammed and that affects you know not not just kind of sort of small labels trying to get stuff pressed it even affects bigger labels trying to repress stuff so you know things will be sold out week of release and you'll be waiting two or three months for them to come back in um but and also you know there's there's they always kind of bring up the fact that, that it's kind of it's just reissues of the same old stuff or you know there are a handful of like really sort of choice pieces um and the rest of it is kind of you know stuff that's that's been around before so I, I kind of understand that the criticisms that are leveled at it but I mean they're, they're great days they bring a lot of people into the shop a lot of footfall into the shop and the atmosphere is always really good um yes. you know we're quite lucky that it's not too adversarial you don't get people kind of fighting over the same stuff um <laughs> but um it, you, you know you're, you're getting a shop full of people for a whole weekend really um who, who want to be in a record shop and who love physical products and music and who are just are music fans um, how, how can people uh, find out a bit more about the shop if they don't know where it is or, or are you um, online at all? Yeah, so we um, we do all the sort of socials. Um, so if you search Sound Knowledge Marlborough on Facebook, uh, Sound Knowledge underscore on Twitter and uh, Instagram. We recently just set up a, a website to sell through as well. That was obviously one of the things that kind of became uh, more apparent that it was a good thing to get into during the lockdowns and things. Uh, so you can find us at www.sound-knowledge.co.uk. Perfect. Or pop into the shop. Brilliant, Sam. Thank we'll you pop so into much. the shop, which we would like. <laughs> we like to see people instead of just put stuff in jiffy bags and send them out. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes, you mentioned earlier on about uh, William Doyle and, and uh, when he played in the shop. So uh, we thought we'd play one of his tracks, which is uh, from last year. And nobody else will tell you. just played uh, was uh, released last year it's called nobody else will tell you and that is from william doyle 
um, who had played at uh, at Sound Knowledge. Uh, it's a shop I've never been to, but I don't tend to head Marlborough Way that often. Ah, well, it's absolutely worth you taking, you know, some time out and just going and visiting it. Marlborough's actually a really lovely town as well. It's got an Oxfam dedicated just to books. And if you're a bit of a bookworm, which I know you are, um, books, old books that are like really cheap, all books that are really expensive. All of them are in Oxfam. It's just across the street. It's brilliant. Um, so even if you don't go for records, go for books. Uh, but it's a really lovely town. Um, there's loads of little stuff, things going on. But the record shop really is the crown jewel. It's set over two floors and it's got a, like a really tight spiral staircase with a pole down the middle that you have to go up to get upstairs. Perfectly safe, don't worry. Um, but upstairs is just vinyl, wall to wall vinyl. Um, yeah, great, great shot run by wonderful people. Cool, just like Karen. Uh, okay, let's um, get on to a bit of news. And I think uh, we'll just focus on this July 19th <coughs> date where we now believe yeah. that we will be returning to normal. Uh, for you, Karen, as somebody who works in venues, and promotion what does july 19th mean to you it means we can go back to work um properly um I, I i think the government are going to stick with this one now i can't see them changing it now i really think it's going to go ahead that's good news for everybody who had a postponed gig um, or a gig that was on on the wire you know on on your tentative so i'm pretty confident my frank turner show is going to go ahead in cheese and grain and froom it means i can go back to working um I believe that there might well be still some things in place to keep people safe, for example, wearing masks. Now, the government have suggested that there won't be any legal requirement to do it. However, that doesn't stop venues or buildings or pubs or shops enforcing their own rules. And if they feel like they're allowed, they should still be wearing masks, then they are quite within the rights to say you have to wear your mask. Um, and I think the mask thing probably to a certain extent is here to stay. I've been chatting to a few friends like Leander and that who are event coordinators elsewhere in the county. And they've said that they're probably going to stick with a mask thing because it's about um, how you're perceived and about perception and about, you know, at least you're trying to do whatever you possibly can to keep your audience safe, <clears throat> which is something I, I very much believe in. I want people to feel safe when they come back to events. So if, if you can wear a mask in an inner show, just continue to do so until one day, one day in the many miss a time it'll all be sorted out and we'll, we'll feel comfortable again but yeah so i'm delighted to be back the gigs we've got at the neils are due to go ahead at the end of july we have a dance show um and hopefully that will break us in nice and gently into rocking in the free world hmm. um has your frank turner gig got a new date yet the 7th and 8th of august it's a friday it's a saturday and sunday again so 7th and 8th and sadly for me that is the very same weekend that the neil in chippenham opens we have a bg's tribute and we have a Rod Stewart tribute. And as a result, I'll have to be at both of those because I am the front of house venue tech. Which means I'm going to miss my own gig, Frank Turner at the Cheese and Grain. So I'm really sad about that. But that is the life that we lead, John. That's the life that we lead. You've got an assistant now. Surely you can work this out. <laughs> but the thing is, is that the Chippenham is my day job by the council. So I can't not do those events. So. Um, we, we just need, I think we should just rewind as well and, and just look look back at um, what we should have been doing this uh, this weekend because we really should be sat in the 2000 Trees field now. Yes, we really should be. It's, it's, it's Wednesday, so we would be travelling down this evening to set up our tent ready for the Thursday half day thing that, that, that happens. Um, we should be on that route. We should be on that bandwagon. We should be leaving work early, John. We should be packing and, and being all excited. And whilst I am excited, it's for different reasons entirely. Yeah, I've, I've, I've got the entire week off work and nowhere to go. <laughs> John, come over, come over to my house. We'll have a little pitch up in the garden. Sounds like fun. Let's do that. <laughs> we, we are. Zoe's just bought us a pop up tent. It takes two seconds to pop up because it's all spring loaded. So you like, unzip it and it goes bing. Into, yeah, but into... how long does it take to put down again? And literally, so you, you fold it. So you just bend it over and fold it and twist it. And then you put the clips together. So about 10 seconds. I'll believe it when I see it. I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> cool. But actually getting um, it up was easy. Getting it down was difficult. <laughs> if uh, anyone wants to get in touch with us, the best way of doing that is to email, which is sheeraisolation at gmail.com. That's sheer with two E's. Um, if you want to go back and find any previous tracks or shows that, that we've done over the past uh, 15, 16 months now, um, it's all on YouTube. It's all on Spotify. It's all on Apple Play, whatever streaming service you want to use all of the previous shows are on there thanks for listening everybody we'll be back next week cheers john take care mate see you later bye bye